Another term you may hear referenced in cabling is plenum cable. This really doesn't talk about the cable as much as it talks about the covering around the cable. Plenum is not a cable type. The plenum is the space that's inside your ceiling. So in your environment, you probably in your work environment, there is a drop ceiling. And above the drop ceiling is what we call the plenum. This is an area where you've got heating ducts, you've got air conditioning ducts, there's probably plumbing that's up there. A lot of things happen in the plenum. And the plenum is a place where, of course, you might want to run cabling. It's perfect for that. If you're planning to do that, then you're going to want to make sure you get a cable that is specially designed to work in the plenum. It's designed to go up there because it does not burn very fast. This is the idea is that if you're going to have cable that goes up in your ceiling, or perhaps more importantly, that's in the riser, which means that it, it goes from place to place uh, within your building, you may have certain requirements that have you have to have a plenum rated cable that will not burn quite as fast. Uh, the requirements between floors and these risers aren't quite as strict as in the plenum on the floor itself. But still, the requirements are there, and they were built to be able to handle these fire requirements should there ever be a problem. Functionally, the cable inside of those is probably Cat5 or Cat3 or Cat6 or whatever you purchased. It's what you've wrapped around the outside. It's the cable jacket. Usually, these are polyvinyl chloride PVC or fluorinated ethylene polymer, FEP type cables. You'll need to make sure that if you are someone who is purchasing cable that's going to go in the plenum, that you get one that is properly rated. And you may have to talk to somebody local who knows the fire codes for your area to make sure you get the right kind of cable. This is really just planning for the worst case scenario. Hopefully, you'll never have to worry about that covering and the type of cable you have in the plenum. It's really there in case there is a major problem like a fire. And you want to be sure you're able to contain that fire to a very small place. A very common kind of cable is a coaxial cable. Many of us have these in our homes that we've connected our televisions to. And a coaxial means there's two axes. You've got really this connection of a cable going through. And in the middle of the cable is a conductor, a single wire that's going through that piece. And you've wrapped around it insulators and shieldings and jackets just to protect this metal wire that's on the inside. Notice there's no twisted pair. There's no multiple cables inside of this. It is primarily used in older Ethernet networks in a networking term. So you'll, you may see the term 10 base 5, which is the same thing as ThickNet, which used a coax type of RG8 slash U. You may also see more commonly a 10 base 2 thin net, which used RG58. These are standard names for the type of coaxial cable. There's all kinds of different coaxial cables that's out there. But these days, we see mostly coax used in television, digital signals going through your cable television, maybe provide you with cable modem access through the coax. And it's a very simple type. And it's really designed to go over long distances, go in the ground. It's very simple. You only have one conductor inside of here. So it makes it very easy to send that, uh, that little bit of information from point A to point B. For long distances, we have found that a great way to send networking signals is with light. Light has the ability to go for a very, very long distance without a lot of problems with sending that signal once it gets over there. So we've created these optical fiber cables. They're a fiber made of glass or, or a type of plastic that can take that light from point A to point B. I can go with really high bandwidths over long distances. I don't need a lot of complex complexity to this. There's very little electrical interference that will happen with light, practically none. So this is a great way to send data back and forth. There's two types of fibers you might run into. One is a multi-mode fiber, which means the light goes into the fiber and it bounces around until it gets to the other side. And on the other side, there has to be a receiver there that can handle this light that's bounced all over the place. And because it's bouncing around, it does lose signal as it bounces off the sides of the fiber as it goes through. But the, the ability to communicate through this fiber, the fiber is less expensive. The technology needed to send this light through is much less expensive. So it, it's very common to see this in a data center. If you need to go very long distances, we tend to use something called single mode fiber, which uses a very different kind of light that's sent through. Usually it's a laser type light, and it goes straight through. There really is no bouncing off the side of a single mode fiber. And so we're able to get a very strong signal down a much farther distance. You can go kilometers down the road with a single mode fiber and connect up separate buildings to each other that may not be anywhere near each other just by sending light down that optical fiber. Optical fiber connectors take many different forms. They're SC connectors. They're ST connectors. 
all kinds of different types of connections on here. But you can almost tell by this protective white covering that's around the fiber. The fiber is actually inside of all of that. And if you look in the end of it, and it's don't look in it when it's connected, look in it when it's disconnected at what's going in there. You don't know if there's a laser on the other side that's sending that light down. But if it's a disconnected, you can see a tiny little fiber on the end. Sometimes we'll figure out which one's connected on one end to the other by just taking a flashlight, sending it in this one, and seeing which one of these connections it comes out on. And then I know I've got two ends of a particular fiber. It really helps when they're really, really long. You'll see these fibers very much in large infrastructures and between different buildings. Large carriers of telecommunications equipment certainly use fiber to get traffic across the country or anywhere in the world. For the CompTIA exam, you're going to need to know what the very common connectors are on these copper cables. And the most common ones you'll see are RJ45 and RJ11 connections. RJ is a term that stands for registered jack. We never call it a registered jack. We just have always used the abbreviation RJ11 or RJ45. But this is a standard jack type that refers to exactly how many different connectors are in there and how many different pins are in this wiring pattern. We use a term called positions and contacts. And we use an abbreviation to show that if it's RJ11, it's a six position four contact cable. If you look at this really closely, you can't hardly see the other uh, the other con positions that are here. There's two other positions on the outside, but only four contacts on the middle. And you can all you can really see it here where there's one, two, three, four, five, six. In this particular case, this RG11 only has two of these pins that are connected in the middle. Two, two of those contacts. But the standard will use all four of those with the standard piece. RJ45 is one that has eight positions and eight contacts that it uses. And you can see all eight of those on the back of the RJ45 and in the jack itself. It's very easy to get these mistaken if you're working in, in the dark or you're working behind a system, because you could take an RJ11 cable and plug it into an RJ45 jack. You obviously can't go that other direction. The RJ45 won't fit into the RJ11. So if you're plugging in both of these, you'll want to put in the RJ45 first, and then the only jack left is probably your RJ11. Let's review what we've learned about cables. Our first question on our network cabling and connectors module, what is an STP cable? Well, that certainly is an abbreviation for something that stands for shielded twisted pair. Remember, you're going to need a ground if you use an STP cable. What kind of network media carries light as a network signal? Well, that's not our wired copper connections. That indeed is an optical fiber connection. And the last question, what is the most common network interface on today's copper Ethernet networks? Now, we've seen a couple of different ones. It is a registered jack configuration, and it's an RJ45. Well, that gets us to the end of this module on network cabling and connectors. We've learned what all of those different categories are, where we would use plenum cable, and much more. If you'd like to see any of our a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.